Hey brothers and sisters, today is May 22nd, 2023. So these are some words that I heard upon awakening from the Lord several years ago. I can't remember if it was 2018 or 2019, but I have shared it many times throughout the years. Um, it was on May 23rd. And upon awakening, I heard the Lord say, the enemy always disables communication before it attacks. So I just wanted to share um, this clip. It's from our brother Dabu77. Here we go. This is Dabu7. We have confirmation here today that dozens of U.S. senators have been issued satellite phones to be used during an emergency situation. And this situation is what they're dubbing a disruptive event. Whatever that may be, apparently our senators are being told that something is incoming here right around the corner and that these phones that have been distributed as part of a new security effort from the Senate Sergeant at Arms have been offered to every single senator in case of a big time emergency. It's unclear exactly which senators took part in this, but they're saying that last month, Karen Gibson put this out and said that satellite communication will ensure a redundant and secure means of communication during a disruptive event. So the red flags are flying now and the questions are coming in as well. What is the disruptive event? They obviously know that something is about to happen and they're preparing their senators for such an event. You know, lights out. And as it says here, the phones will support security measures during an emergency that takes out communications in the United States. Folks, we've got a big event about to happen where the communication and comms are about to go down and they are making sure that our senators have satellite phones to be able to deal with the situation. This is real deal. I'm going to break this down further on the live stream. Make sure to join me going live tonight. The enemy always disables communication before it attacks. So there's some things that I need to say that are very important. This is uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience, conscience seared with a hot iron. So the video I did several days ago, on 19 heart, 19 hurt, and then three day warning 19, was the Lord warning his children about false prophets, especially one in particular. And on May 19th, three day warning 19, on May 19th, I posted a video of that very warning. He was warning his children not to listen to false prophets that are speaking lies in his name. The warning was given on the 19th that many hearts would hurt. So what's three days later, May 22nd, and here we are. <sighs> 
Hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit is not a skill to be acquired. It's a sense to be sharpened. God's voice is stable and consistent. Our thoughts and emotions are all over the place. God's voice guides. Your voice and the enemy's voice pushes. So if you're listening to someone or something and you feel agitated, not just physically, or you feel fearful, and if you feel agitated physically and spiritually, then that is not of God. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God's voice will always align with his word. He will never speak against his word. If you want to know his voice, if you want to know his voice, sorry, if you want to know his voice, then you need to know his word. When you leave the safety of his word, you are in danger. If you have to question the clear teaching of scripture to make your opinions or someone else's opinions or experiences more comfortable, then you are in danger. The devil got Eve to question the word and then contradicted it. The moment you begin to question the word, you are in danger. God's voice affirms your identity in Christ. Your voice, your flesh, which is an enmity with God, and the enemy's voice questions it. When you have believed in the true gospel, that Jesus died in your place, for the remission of all of your sins, was buried and rose again for your justification. You are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. Eternally saved. You are not saved by your works, period. Then his righteousness is imputed to us. We are then clothed in his righteousness, in the righteousness of Christ. The Holy Spirit is in you. Do you know who you are in Christ? Satan tried to get Jesus to question who, his, who he was, who his identity was. The Holy Spirit is constantly reaffirming our identity in Christ. And if you are believing in a false gospel, a works-based performance belief to be saved, you are constantly going to be living in a place of fear. You're going to have a constant barrage of thoughts that don't line up with the word of God. His word is the key to understanding the Holy Spirit. The word is our safety net so we can know the truth and not be deceived by ourselves, the enemy, and other people. So stop relying on others to spoon feed you and get in the word yourself. When we, read, when we read his word ourselves, it becomes spirit and life. You are renewing your mind. Then wisdom naturally follows. Then you start to understand the mind of Christ, and you can hear the voice of God. Please, please get in his word. Because these days are very, very evil. And if you don't know his word, you're going to be deceived. His sheep hear his voice and they will not listen to another. All right, I love you guys. Hold fast. Let no man take your crown. <laughs>